Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds, and what a day it is! I am, I'm all dressed up. I've gone, I've gone India blue, in in honour of <laughs> India reaching the finals of the ODI Cricket World Cup, and they did it in fine fashion, didn't they, boys? They um, did. Virat Kohli century, his fiftieth ODI century. Shreya Sire with a probably a better century, but a less memorable one because it's not his 50th. He hasn't overtaken Sachin Tendulkar. There's not there's not more things at play to Shreyas's. Um, and then Mohamed Shami got a seven foot. Like there's there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to dissect here. Um, Devin Conway. Um, oh no, not Devin Conway. Sorry. Um, Daryl Mitchell. Daryl Mitchell. That's the one. He got a century. In case you didn't notice. Um, kind of in the background though, because so much has happened. So boys. I'm a bit overexcited. I need to calm myself down. Um, I'm <laughs> sure a lot of people watching this are also a bit overexcited right now. Celebrations going on. Let's take a minute and let's let's nerd this out. Let's just talk. Let's dissect what happened. Let's do it. I don't think, I don't think there's any reason you need to be underexcited. You should be overexcited. I mean, India are in the final of the World Cup. They couldn't manage it four years ago when they lost to New Zealand in the semi-final they managed to overcome it this time their squad is insane we talked about how in a previous podcast about how Shreya Sire looks like the weakest player in the side and he's just come and absolutely blitz the century like <laughs> where Suyuki Mayada he's probably the weakest in that side and thinking about where he was a year ago it's just absolutely incredible how India have just dominated this world cup um well it's not incredible we we kind of expected it to start with uh but no team has managed to to come close i mean new zealand gave it a little bit of a a go didn't they when they were 220 odd for for two and then enter mohammed shami and it was just it was just beautiful to watch um but thinking about the innings of virat kohli and shreya Sire, they were at well, Kohli came to the wicket after a pretty rapid start uh, from Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill. And then Shubman Gill was retired hurt, which everyone was sad to see. Um, but then, yeah, it just continued to be a bit of a procession, really, from from Virat Kohli, who just, he just looks like he's in the form of his life, really, um, which is perfect for this World Cup. I mean, Benj... Just sum up Virat Kohli if you can. Goat. Ooh, that's mm. a good one. Yeah. Isn't like it? Like, you know, he's taken over Sachin's record. Like, can anyone be better? I mean, right, let's let's look at the stats though. Strike rate of 103. We've seen faster. But it was sort of the the time and the way that he went about the 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 century today, wasn't it? Um I don't think there's any pleasing you, Bench. Like <laughs> <laughs> the guy's just he's rattled off and a magnificent century in a semi-final. It's not, oh, could have been quicker though. <laughs> Shreya Sire hit a better century in my it, view. Shreya Sire was hit magnificent. More sixes. Um, I um, so that, that... Did you cast your mind back, Benj. Do you remember like two years ago when Be- when Virat Kohli was just in the massive slump of form? Mm. I saw a, I saw a really good tweet today where it was saying, "Can we just like do a bit of a Stuart Broad?" To, to Virat Kohli's form and just say like it was void <laughs> it didn't mm. count like Stuart Broad did with the, the Australia Ashes you're just like well it just it doesn't count <laughs> I, th- yeah. I think we do that with Virat Kohli's form from two years ago yeah he's he's just looked so good all all the innings he's, he's played in this World Cup other than the one against England he's looked so assured and confident and he's looked to dominate the bowlers not uh, Benji's obviously critical of the strike rate, but but not in like a a strike rate way. He just his ability to work the ball into the gaps look as if no team's gonna get you out. The way he was playing with the opposition when he was saying, "I'm just gonna get a century this game uh, because I can," like that sort of dominance is you can't really fault it. Um, and when you think about how well Sachin Tendulkar did um, throughout all of his World Cups. And then Virat Kohli's gone and be- beaten his record for most runs. It's just mm. insane to watch. I think one thing that you can really look at with the stats is if if, if you look at Kohli's boundary count, Hatch didn't hit that many boundaries. Nine fours and two sixes. 
to today just showed you how much he put in with running be- be- between the wickets. I think he ran a couple of twos to bring his hundred up um, and just put the batters at the bowlers under a lot of pressure. I mean, there are some massive New Zealand scores today in the bowling figures of Trent Bolt and Tim Southey. We're forgetting another century today in the amount of runs that Tim Southey got hit for. He did yeah. pick up three wickets, but he was going at 10 and, and over, and he just showed how dominant the, the Indian batters were today. I actually want to shout out Kara Hall, who came out and played a very un Kara Hall innings um, and hit 40 off 20 balls, like al- almost going at 200, um, which is, is not what we often see from him. He, he sort of came out and hit for, from ball one. Um, I, I actually I want to pull you on that one because I think that should be a real a really Kale Rahul innings. And we've mm, said that in in watching him in T20s for a long time. He's he's so capable of it. And that's where you see the best of him when he's like when he's aggressive um, from the outset. And, you know, he has it in him. Um, and it's I think it's when when the game situation where there is zero pressure on him that's where you see the absolute best come from Kale Rahul. And I think, yeah, like like you're saying, that's yeah. what we saw today was just really, really good finishing. I think India yeah. just dominated it really um, from the start. Like the fact that a massive thing that played into today was, was the toss. Um, I mean, towards the end of the game, you could see how fatigued all the players were. You could see how fatigued Rohit Sharma looked, who has played the majority of his cricket at the Wangahedi Stadium of his competitive cricket uh, for the IPL or, or, or domestic. And you could just see how much physical intensity they'd gone through today. And, and, and New Zealand just didn't seem that they were, they were uh, there for it. I think the fact that Darren Mitchell was cramping up, which really halted his strike rate at the end of the game, just showed how much strain it, it, it had gone through. And for me, it showed how important the toss was to, 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 to to, to uh, the toss was today not to pull anything away from India with the bat but it was such a key toss to win I, I, I think the only way that New Zealand could have won is if they'd have put up a massive score and then and then defended it um I mean New Zealand props to them they put up a fight you know they they hit 372 when we were coming into like the last 10 11 overs I was checking the scores today I didn't get to watch the game but you could see that it was becoming a bit of an exciting game when Darren Mitchell and Glenn Phillips were there for the, for the fifth wicket. It looked like it was almost possible, but as soon as um, they lost the wicket of of, of Glenn Phillips, it was sort of downhill um, from there. India came out today and had some really poor fielding, really. Like they didn't field their best and they let through uh, 29 extras. It, it, it wasn't their best day, yet they still won by over 60 runs, uh, by 70 runs. And it was just showing how dominant the bowlers had really have been, particularly Mohamed Chami. James, as yeah, a man who's also got a seven for this year, Orzak. What do you think about Mohammed Shami? I mean, I'm, I'm, I just I'm, I'm to... personally really glad that you brought that up because I don't think that gets brought up enough. Um, <laughs> no. I can't bring it up myself, but you know, uh, uh, yeah, over to you, Zach. <laughs> uh, I was just going to talk about the fact that it's it's so apparent the strengths that India have had this tournament with regards to seam bowling when you compare New Zealand seam bowling to India seam bowling because for New Zealand there wasn't really a pick of their bowlers other than Mitch Santner being economical. And they've had to rely time and again on the bowling of Mitch Santner and to an extent, Glenn Phillips in this tournament to get to the semi-final. But Trent Bolt, Tim Southey, Lockie Ferguson, they've all struggled. Whereas when you look at the Indian team attack, Jasper Brumra, Mohamed Siraj and Mohamed Shami, it's like there's, they're bowling incredibly well. And for me, it's the lengths they're bowling. The lengths you bowl as a seam bowler in India is so important because if you pitch it up, then you just get absolutely hammered. And if you're too short, you just there's no pace in the wicket and you just get pulled and, or cut for four. So the fact that they're just consistently landing the ball in the right areas to trouble the batsman um, is ridiculous. And I mean, when Mohamed Shami took that 
that wicket of Glenn Phillips, I was like, right, it's it's started now. Um, Mohamed Shami is just going to bowl up all the way through. I wasn't envision, envisioning him getting seven wickets. That was just ridiculous. It, it, just no one could play him. It was insane. Seven yeah. wickets, four of which were caught behind. Mm. It well. was. Um, it it has been a masterclass, and to say that Hardik Pandya was in that side before, um, and Mohamed Shami was wasn't in the side at the start of the tournament is testament to how deep the 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 resources that India have to draw on are. Um mm. it was like you say it India have really shown what a perfect ODI team look like. And we mentioned this in a couple of podcasts ago, how the bowlers need to be good test match quality bowlers. That's something I've learned personally. You know, in, in ODI cricket you need to be able to play those test match lines. You need to be able to bowl back of a length. Um, but, you you know, at the death, generally, you do need to to be able to draw on that experience and, as well. Um, they haven't needed to, really. I, I can't think of a single game that India have played where they've had to go to death bowling. Um, it no. just so happens that they have one of the greatest Yorker specialists in, in Jasper Bumrah in their ranks. But he hasn't really needed to draw on it at all. Um, no. It has been mostly line and length that that gets them there, and then in in the same way, you know, all of those batsmen have excellent first class records, um, and and it shows. One thing I'm confused by, um, so I, I want to draw on something that I think has been a key for India, and then something I'm confused by with New Zealand. I'll start with the confusing thing. Um, what's the point in having Mark Chapman? I don't I don't quite understand what he's doing at number seven, just specialist batter number seven. Like, we haven't yeah. seen that much and it's a weird one. That's that's no, my I first mean... question, and I'll I'll, I'll offer yeah. that out. Second thing I just I want to just comment on um just a nuanced thing of how important Rohit Sharma has been for this side, not only in mm. his captaincy, which has been brilliant, and I feel like he's lived under Coley's shadow for a little bit. He's he's out of that now. He's so good. But in the way that he has been so aggressive up front, he's doing what so many teams want and yet can't quite achieve. Like that's what Australia want from David Warner every time. He's pretty good, to be fair. But that's what England want from Johnny Bairstow. He flopped. Yeah, so many players, so many teams want that player. Rohit Sharma stands up and he's like, I am that guy. Um, yeah, so on, on to my Mark Chapman question. What, what What's going on, boys? Well, I see it as... It's between Mark Chapman and Ishodi for who takes that that spot. And because Mitch Santner can easily bat at number seven, we know he's a good enough batsman. And Ishodi can also bat at number eight. Um, he's he's a, not a bad bat at all. However, although Ishodi can give you overs with the ball, Mark Chapman is by far a better batsman mm. and more destructive. And I think they would say, well, the way Glenn Phillips is bowling and Ratchin and Ravindra supporting, do we actually need Ish Sodi's overs because he's not been bowling well at all in this tournament oh. and he's not world-class? But so I don't I think Ish as... the player. Isn't it just Jamie Nishima or is he injured? Uh, I'm not sure. But like, I, I... Like, I'd much rather see them play Jimmy Nishim as a specialist batter because he can at least hit from ball one. But so is Mark Chapman. I mean, he's got... He's, he's not a bad batter at all. You're absolutely right. And I, I think... Yeah. I think you are right in that because Glenn Phillips is has just kind of become a genuine all rounder now, and <laughs> they've got Ratchin Ravindra top of the order. I, I think it does open them up to be able to do that. Um, mm. It just it seemed weird to me because I, I I feel like Mark Chapman is more of a upper middle order batsman. That's I would have him coming in at sort of four or five if I was just plonking him in a team anywhere. So it it seems weird having him come in at seven, a role that he might not necessarily be perfect in. Um, and expect him to p perform in knockout cricket where it's the most pressure. It's a uh, it's just a question. I, I open it out to the to the cricket nerds, you know, the the, the community in the comments. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Like, do you think it was a good call? Um, yeah. Should we call it there, boys? I yeah. I, 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 I want to carry on. I, I want to get more dressed up in my India blue. I need to celebrate <laughs> a little bit more. Get the family around. Um, yeah. have a biryani i don't know um so yeah we're, we're gonna <laughs> i was thinking punjabi things now um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say please and thank you 
please is for the subscribe um is for join the members um join the become a certified cricket nerd the link is in the the, the description down below and the thank you is for all the support that we've had over the course of this world cup it's been absolutely amazing um we have grown quite a bit which is lovely to see so continue to tell your friends about us please uh, give this video a like and subscribe it's awesome to see you guys uh, especially commenting and and we are quite active in the comments so we will reply you can follow us on social medias uh, all the links are in the link tree down in the description and other than that we'll see you later so goodbye